Welcome back to the final episode of CCTV at ChemCon Asia 2015. Today, feedback from the Q&A on Asia, an interview on reach from the authority perspective, and our final coverage of our local reporter, Mr. B. But as promised, first the Q&A on Asia. I just want to share something about culture uh, <coughs> carefully. Uh, if you are talking about culture within a company, about HSE matters, the business leaders can influence a lot. But if you look into closer to us in the regulatory affair scenario, uh, uh, area, we are facing external regulations that are not clear. And we are forced to react, not to proactively do something. Yeah, that's the culture that we face. I, I want to add a little bit on that from, uh, as I'm also from an industry perspective. Um, indeed, although the nature could be a little bit reactive because there's a law, there's a response, um, f I think I, I would say from two perspectives. One is that um, what will industry do, right? Because in today's couch, in today's world, the reality is that it's a, usually it's a global business. Um, the company from this country sell to, you know, produce in Japan, sell to somebody else, package somewhere else, um, let's say a plastic additive into uh, um, some plastic and plastics and manufacture somewhere else in Indonesia and get become a food packaging. Um, container and to China, so on and so forth. So I I would say the company can even um, uh, maybe not to the proactive way, but at least can anticipate. And actually, that's also driven by the business. So today's customers, I would say, it become more and more aware of the regulatory demand. Maybe the manufacturer of the plasticizer in Japan is have full knowledge about regulation in Japan. But at the end of the day, the, this this chemical or the chemical mixture end up in a totally different market, and that is where. Um, maybe not say proactive, but a very active communication and anticipation of the customer needs. And that is also the business demands. It's not even say nice to have. The customers today are smart enough in the receiving country and the demand to us is this in compliance with um, the food packaging safety law or if this is used in toy, is it compliant with the EN713? 713, yeah, and so on and so forth. So that's even not just, uh, I think it's a little bit beyond reactive nature, but it's more of a part of the essential practice of the business today. Today's interview is about reach from an authority perspective. After the white paper was published in 2001, ECA finally opens its doors in 2007 for a groundbreaking new regulation called REACH. More recently, also in Korea, K-REACH was implemented. A lot of similarities, but also some differences on the menu, like polymers. Today we'll discuss REACH from an authority perspective with Ms. Jae Jung Yo from the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy from Korea and a founding father of REACH, Mr. Robert Donkers. What are some of the main challenges for industry posed by K-REACH? There are several changes for industry, um, like uh, financing and uh, structure of industry. You already mentioned uh, SMEs, small medium enterprises. Uh, Rob, that was also a prominent uh, part of the 2012 REIT review. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that review process? In the review, we came to the conclusion that it's uh, working quite well. Um, however, there are some points which need to be improved, also on the part of industry. On the other hand, um, we expected a little bit more problems for SMEs and they still see it as a very uh, challenging and complicated uh, piece of legislation. Ms. Yu, I know uh, SMEs are a top priority for MOTI. How do you support SMEs in this? MOTI consider a similar uh, problem as uh, you reach for uh, SMEs. We made uh, guideline for implementation or we uh, consulting and uh, um, release a report news mm -hmm. for industry. They are not aware of 
their roles and duties of implementary of CareReach. And also they, had, uh, they have a problem about uh, co cost. And what are the future operation plans for CareReach? We have a plan to uh, improvement of CareReach and also we need uh, more support policy uh, to implement of CareReach. Please watch the complete interview on our website and YouTube channel. Also, today's statement is about REACH and in particular data sharing between different countries and regions. In our studio, Christian Verdalen of Roya Has Coding DHV. Christian, welcome. Thank you, Chit. What are your thoughts about sharing data between different countries and regions? Well, what we see is that in Europe, uh, under EU REACH, of course, there is the obligation to share data through so-called Substance Information Exchange Fora. Um, and currently we see that in various other countries, EU REACH-like regulations are being implemented, where sh uh, sharing of data is also mandatory. Um, what I think is that we should have a look at how we can optimize the use of existing data, but also the sharing of new data between these various regions where these REACH-like regulations are being implemented. And your statement is? It would be useful to optimize the use of existing data and the generation of new data, for example, to share data for registration purposes under various REACH-like regulations. Super. What do you think? Christia, thank you very much. You're welcome. Time to say farewell to our local reporter, Mr. B. Mr. B, what is the final highlight of Hong Kong you'd like to share with us? The Star Ferry. Since the end of the 19th century, Star Ferry steamboats are crossing Victoria Harbour. Not only are they an important part of the commuter system between Hong Kong Island and Kowloon, they're also iconic. I would say if you haven't been on the Star Ferry, you haven't been to Hong Kong. It's a pity they only sail here, otherwise I could take the Star Ferry all the way from here via the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean to the North Sea all the way to Amsterdam. From the Pearl of the Orient, this was Mr. B for CCTV. Today's forecast. Biocides, regulated list of chemicals, confidential business information, endocrine disruptors and nanomaterials, and our grand finale, Korea. Thank you for watching, we hope you liked it and looking forward to seeing you in Amsterdam.